Why are so many people struggling to get into a good tech role? I see it all the time. You know you can do the job and you feel like you've made that clear, but you're just not getting the callbacks and you definitely don't have a job offer in your inbox yet. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly what's missing and what you're missing. And if you take these steps to fix these common problems, you can have recruiters reaching out to you. I've been in identity access management for over six years now. And I regularly have recruiters hitting me up on LinkedIn, in my email, texting my phone, calling my phone. But it wasn't always like that. I started at the help desk, just like a lot of other folks and everybody else. The difference is I found a path into a high demand, high paying field that a lot of people just don't know about, which is identity access management or I am. The field is consistently hiring while you see mass layoffs in some part of tech, cybersecurity, and specifically identity remains a critical need for companies. They can't find enough pe qualified people to even do the job. So if you've been applying for roles and hearing back nothing, crickets, let's talk about the real reason why you're not hearing anything back. Problem number one is your resume. First, when you're applying for these roles, your resume has to be on point. You need to have the right keywords and qualifications or an HR system and recruiters will just skip right over it. You have to be tailoring your resume to specific job postings. I know it's tempting to just go on LinkedIn and spam that easy apply button, but that's just but that doesn't work anymore for these high paying, high quality six figure roles. You have to focus on tailoring your resume and showing why you're a good fit for that specific job. Problem number two is the biggest thing recruiters are looking for is if you have the right certifications, right? In the cybersecurity world, and especially in IM, certifications are everything. Don't let people lie to you and tell you that they aren't. Certifications right now are everything. A lot of people talk about the CompTIA certs like Network Plus or Security Plus, and those are great foundational certs to show you you understand the basic concepts. I have my Network Plus myself, but really unlocks the high paying IM jobs are the vendor specific certifications. This is what shows an employer you are qualified to actually do the work on the tools they use. For me, that was CyberArk. Getting my CyberArk certification is what allowed me to move from the help desk position I was in to that first six figure role for that to that first IM six figure role. When a company sees a cert for a tool like CyberArk or Okta or SailPoint, it tells them you're ready to start contributing on day one. Problem number three is experience. Now you might be thinking, but Kyle, I don't have any IM experience yet, which is totally fine. That could be what's stopping you from getting your foot in the door for that perfect role. So you might not be able to get that exact $150,000 engineer role you want right at the start. Be open-minded, look for opportunities to get your foot in the door. Maybe it's just a junior IM analyst role or junior role or an IT system admin role um, where you can get your hands on the identity tools. My first job was help desk. I used that experience to build my resume, get my certifications, and then make that, that jump. Once you get that first bit of experience, you can start moving up very, very quickly. And then I would say the problem number four is your tech skills. You also want to make sure you have I am specific technical skills. What I mean by that is you need to know the tools that companies are actually using. In the private sector and really everywhere, companies rely on major platforms to manage identity. This includes privilege access management or PAM with tools like Cybark. It also includes identity governance, which is IGA, with tools like SailPoint, access management with tools like Okta. Look at the job postings you want. See what skills and tools that they're looking for. If you don't have them, go to the vendor's website. Often you can get a free trial or access to training materials to get hands-on experience. Problem number five would be there's a huge misconception that you need a four-year computer science degree or a cybersecurity degree to get into this industry, which is just certainly just not true at all. When it comes to getting into IM, your certifications and your hands-on skills matter the most. If you don't have the right certs and you don't have the right skills, a degree won't get you where you want to be. And sometimes in these different programs and different degree programs, you guys, they don't even help you get certifications, right? And certifications, like I said, are the most important thing. Your resume and your certification are the top two most important things to actually landing a job. Resume 
And the certifications are the most important things to get you to where you want to be. For me, I didn't wait to finish a degree. I was working at the help desk. I saw an opportunity in CyberArk. I got the certification and I was able to get promoted internally to $100,000 plus a year role. That one certification was the key. It proved I had the skills and that's what the hiring manager cared about. Problem number six is the hiring process. The hiring process in tech can feel slow, mundane, um, especially if you're just firing off applications into the void. You have to be persistent. It all is a numbers game. I mentioned this in a couple of videos as well. It's a big numbers game. What you put in is what you get out to say. It can take time, but the opportunities in I am are absolutely there. What really sped up the process for me was focusing on contract roles or contract positions. Companies and especially consulting partners are always looking to hire people with specific I am skills for their projects. They often hire much faster than a big corporation filling a full-time internal role. And almost all of these roles are remote. I've been working remotely my entire career in identity access management. Getting that first contract role is a huge accelerator. It gives you the experience and the connections that you need to build. It opens the door to stacking contracts, which is how you can really scale your income, like I've been able to do. Problem seven is the soft skills. Finally, a lot of people in tech think soft skills don't matter, which is just completely wrong. And I am, you're working with business units, with auditors, with other IT teams. They want to make sure that they can get along with you and that you actually know what you're talking about. If you have good soft skills, you are in a good communicator, you will work well with a team. You're organized. And if you're also organized, it makes it so much easier to get a role and to actually maintain and keep that role. Not every technical person has those soft skills. If you do, it makes you stand out a lot more. So now you should have a good idea of what you might be missing. Let's do a quick recap. First, get the right certifications. Can't stress that enough. That is the number one key. Getting the right certifications are, are so important. I can't stress that enough. You need certifications getting into identity access management, period. You cannot go in there with just Security Plus. You have to have the right certifications, right? Uh, foundational certs like Network Plus are good, but like I was mentioning before, those vendor-specific IM certs like Cyborg are what you get that six-figure job. That's how you get that six-figure job. So you want to keep that in mind. That's super important. Second, you want to make sure you have a solid resume. No pictures, no crazy designs. You don't need to have that you're working at Publix 18 years ago <laughs> or Kroger, whatever. You need to have all the important skills listed on there. Just list your technical skills, your certs, and any education and tailor it to that specific job posting so to just help you and kind of create a more personable feel as well. Third, stay up to date with the IM tools companies are using. Like at a five or 10 job postings, see what they're asking for and find ways to get hands-on experience with those particular tools, like find different labs or different things like that, that you can pretty much replicate so you can help you build up um, that skill set. And lastly, master those soft skills, communication, teamwork, and especially a willingness to learn you have to have, because um, these tools and um, these different environments are always constantly changing and growing. So you have to have a willingness to learn because it's not going to always just be the same walk in the park. It's going to be different things that come up that you've never seen before and that you may have not heard, even if you've been in the field for over six years, um, like myself. You always have to kind of keep your, keep your knife sharpened, right? So if you can get into an interview and you've asked yourself about a tool you don't know, tell them how you would learn it sometimes would be more valuable than you already knowing it. I use that all the time in different interviews. Um, it shows you're a self-starter and motivated. That will take you so far in this industry. So if you haven't been doing these things, this is probably why you haven't been hearing back from hiring managers or recruiters. Go and implement these strategies and it will help you get your foot in the door immediately. I've taken everything that I've learned over the last six years and put it into my free training that I host twice a week, every Sunday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. It's a completely free webinar designed to show you how I got into the industry, and how you can do it for yourself as well. Just click the first link in my description to claim your free spot below. I look forward to seeing you all there. If you are new here, like I always say, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. I appreciate everybody's time today. And any extra video ideas you guys want to hear us talk about on the channel, make sure you comment that down below. Look forward to seeing you guys in the webinar. 
um, also in the webinar, you can ask me questions and different things that you're trying to work on, different certifications that are good. I answer all of those questions. So you definitely want to make sure you are in there to get in there and get the Q&A as well. Uh, so like I said, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Be safe.